In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to get this probe here to orbit the moon. More tutorials coming soon, including how to soft land on the lunar surface, so make sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified when they release. The whole idea of this mission is to cheaply achieve lunar orbit before purchasing Deep Space Avionics. Once again, I'll be breaking down the vessel used, starting with the lunar probe. A hexagonal procedural probe core set to a basic avionics science core configuration containing 5,000 electric charge, with the antenna removed, will be the base piece. Inside the probe, I place a few longer term experiments, cosmic ray science, micrometeorite detection, a magnetometer, and a TV camera, as I should have got most of the short-term experiments already covered with previous flybys. On top, a communitron with enough power to get signal out of the moon. Check out my previous lunar impactor tutorial for more details on this. Around the probe core, I place six solar panels and size them to fit flush against the probe, and finally underneath, a single baby sergeant solid rocket to provide the kick to place this into lunar orbit. With the payload, this provides 582 meters per second of delta V, which is plenty to get an elliptical lunar orbit. The probe core used on this is the fancier variant, which will cost more money, however, to make this cheaper, a standard procedural avionics science core set to a polygon with six sides will also do the trick. Underneath, the TLI stage. On top, basic near-Earth avionics set to control 1.8 tons, with 1,000 electric charge and the antenna removed, as the communitron on top of the final probe will be more than capable for all comm needs once in space. Then below, an isogrid high-pressure tank with dimensions of 1 meter by 1.6, filled with fuel for an AJ-10-101A on the bottom of the tank. This, after RCS is placed, will provide 3,186 meters per second of delta V, which is more than the 3,150 needed. Then RCS is added for control and correct orientation of the spacecraft. This payload weighs just under 1.8 tons, so the launch vehicle I chose to go for was a Titan using isogrid tanks. I know this is capable of lifting nearly two tons, so it should be plenty. The vehicle consists of an LR87 first stage and an LR91 second stage. Yeah, it's a Titan. And that makes up the entire rocket for this mission. As always, the craft file can be found on my Patreon. To launch, I set the moon as the target and then launch into its plane using MacJeb's ascent guidance. The Titan LV used is definitely a good addition to a fleet of vehicles. This entire mission cost 5,000 funds, much cheaper than if I'd used an Atlas equivalent. Only using isogrid tanks over balloon tanks will massively save on costs, both in terms of building the vehicle and also tooling the parts. The drawback is Titan engines are unlocked later than Atlas ones, but you should start to see them by the time you're working on lunar orbits. The vehicle also is a bit lighter, only weighing 103 tons on the pad, and has a long list of upgrades that will make using the LR87s and 91s pretty good long term. Once in orbit, I get Mechjeb to plot maneuver to the moon. You can do this yourself, but by this point I've done it so many times this week I was feeling a little lazy. The electric charge contained in the TLI stage should be enough to complete at least one orbit, so you do have the time to pick where you want to start your burn without worrying about drawing power from the lunar probe. I fire up the AJ-10 to perform TLI and get an impact course with the moon. Obviously, we don't want to do that this time, so I use the RCS on the TLI stage to fine-tune my encounter and get a flyby at 60 kilometers above the moon's surface. Then I create a maneuver at the closest encounter and set it to burn retrograde for 580 two meters per second, the exact amount in my solid kick stage. With this maneuver plotted, I have a node to aim for, and reorient the spacecraft so that it's pointing the correct way to burn retro once it arrives at the moon. You may need to fiddle about with this, as moving the spacecraft with RCS can affect your lunar encounter quite drastically. But eventually, I'm happy with the probe's attitude and the maneuver, so I spin up the probe to maintain attitude and then release the lunar probe from the TLI stage. Now I have no control over this at all, and this is why I needed to plot my maneuver while still at Earth. Pointing at the node and spin stabilizing the probe, I know that when I arrive at the moon, I'll be facing the correct direction to capture into a lunar orbit with only the baby sergeant. Early deep space avionics are quite heavy and costly, and you will require those to get any control out at lunar, as the altitude at which near-Earth avionics stop working is roughly double the altitude of geostationary orbit. This design will be capable of completing the first lunar orbit contract, although the second one with tighter requirements may be a little more difficult. You can fine-tune the mass of the probe to get around 800 meters per second with just the baby sergeant though, which is about the number you need to get a circular low lunar orbit, but I'd test this out in sims before actually going ahead with it. Once at the moon, the baby sergeant is fired up, and I get a 70 km by 1200 km orbit, which will complete the contract, and is elliptic enough to run micrometeorite experiments and cosmic ray science. It also shares low and high lunar space, so a lot of science biomes are covered. This probe will not run permanently with everything turned on, but with the solar panels you can fully recharge it, and then reactivate it whenever you want, so it will be capable over a period of time of completing all experiments on board. Next up will be early soft lunar landings, which is going to be quite similar to this, just a tad more terrifying. I'd like to thank Winterfox and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I have been Karnassa, and I will see you later.